What's up, everybody? My name's Jasmine. I was born and raised in Santa Barbara. Um, I'm currently a registered substance abuse counselor. Um, I'm also a recovering addict, and I also do nails on the side. And this is my story. Times we're still making changes. Find the ways to help each other. Many similar faces. There's a way. Meditation and pray. God could pave the way. Many better days in a peaceful place where we lay. A different state of mind in these crazy days. A way to unwind one day at a time. So growing up, my parents were divorced at a very young age. Um, they both had 50-50 custody of me. My dad was born and raised. Well, he was born in um, Jalisco and he came over here at a young age. So my dad was more of a um, old school Mexican parent. Uh, my mom was born here. She was still, Me she's Mexican, but she was more Americanized. So my dad's house was always more um, on the strict side and my mom's house was like less strict. Um, I was always like a daddy's girl growing up. Um, Cause it was me and him for a while I just always have like memories of me and him just always being together, just little memories. Um, at my mom's house, my mom was a single mom um, and I had a brother and a sister over there. We all got along well. We would fight sometimes though, but that's what like every brother and sister do. Um, my mom was always at school, always working trying to do the best for us because she was a single mother and we grew up and like raised in the projects. Uh, my dad remarried when I was about four years old to my stepmom and he's still with her right now. Being in two separate homes, um, it did get me depressed. I remember um, when I would live at my dad's house. So like how I said, my dad was more of an old school Mexican um, parent. He would always show um, like anger more. He would show me love too a lot, but it, I feel like it was more anger. And um, I remember going in the bathroom and I would always cry in the bathroom as a little girl just because I didn't want to show him my feelings because we didn't grow up showing each other feelings as much. It was more like anger. So I feel like I was like um, depressed for a while I would go in the bathroom and cry. And then also seeing my parents um, argue back and forth, I would hear them like talk shit about each other um, all the time. To me, they would try to belittle each other, try to make each other feel better than each other. And I would have to hear it all the time. Um, so I think it would just kind of get me confused in the head, like, oh, is she really this person? Is he really that person? Um, so yeah, it got me depressed. I was confused. I actually had, um, when I was younger, I remember having this one counselor. And I remember I would see her, I think like once or twice a week. And I remember being so happy every single time I would go and see her. And she always understood like everything I was saying to her, she understood everything. It was like if she was on my boat, like everything I understood. And, um, I saw her, I think, up until junior high. And then after junior high, I lost like contact with her. And I don't know what happened to her. And I always like wonder too, like, man, I wonder what happened to her. I wanted to keep going to her, but I just kind of lost contact and I didn't know how to get a hold of her because I was young at that age and I didn't really know how to do it. But um, yeah, having a counselor was very important when I was younger because it was someone who understood me and who was there for me. And it was just like, that one hour that I would go and see her when I would get taken out of class to go see her. Um, it made me feel good because there was someone there listening to me. So seeing my mom as a single mom, it motivated me because it showed me that I don't need a man in my life, that I could do it with or without a man because she's still single to this day and she has her master's degree in psychology. She's a therapist and she did it all by herself. So she really motivates me in doing all of this. Um, she motivated me to be a counselor. Um, I'm soon going to be certified. Right now I'm just registered. But um, yeah, listening to someone at a very young age is very helpful. 
because you need that type of connection with someone to know that someone's there listening and you're being heard. And at what age did you start getting into trouble and why? What caused it? I started getting into trouble in, I believe, seventh grade in junior high. And the reason for it was, I think it was probably just my boyfriend, girls, and I would just end up fighting them. Um, I would end up just getting in so many fights and I eventually got kicked out of the school district. Um, I went to a alternative school. After that, I got accepted back to the school district, which um, I was able to graduate from a regular high school. So I got my high school diploma. And um, one of my best friends um, had died and I started using. So once I started using, um, I was still on my toes. I was going to school. I was working three jobs. I was doing it for like four years. And then I think I just got like too deep into it because I started doing other things. Um, I just kind of like slowly stopped going to school. Um, three jobs led to two jobs and then it led to one job. Um, I was just running amok everywhere with my friends. I didn't care. I was rude to my parents. My dad would be like, why are you doing this? I gave you everything in life that I ever wanted to give you. Why are you acting like this? Like he would always question me and I just like blow him off, I remember. And it hurts me like just to even think about it because it's like, um, it's just like the little things. I know it's not like a big thing, but sometimes the little things you do when you're when you're under the influence, it hurts you. I did a lot of those stupid things and those little stupid things hurt me the most. Um, so, yeah, my um, drug addiction led me to, um, I committed an armed robbery. Um, I got, I was supposed to do five years, but um, I got put on GPS. When I was on GPS, um, I started using again. Um, I kept running on the streets, doing whatever I wanted to do, getting high, I was selling drugs. Um, I went on the run basically. And my PO called me saying that I needed to turn myself in or else he was going to um, report me like as an escape charge, basically. And that was going to catch like another 15 years for it. So I turned myself in. Um, I had drugs on me. I was only supposed to do two months. And with all the stuff that I took in, I caught. Um, they were trying to give me 15 years for it. Uh, my mom got me a lawyer. I ended up doing a five-year prison term. Um, I went to Chachilla. I was there. When you're busted, you have like a lot of time to think. You're just constantly thinking, thinking. Your mind gets clear. You... You think about a lot, you write a lot. I wrote a lot while I was in there. I wrote my dad so many sorry letters just for, like I said, the little stuff that I did. He probably thought I was crazy saying like, oh, I'm sorry for this, I'm sorry for that. It was just little things. Um, my mom too. I was there. Um, and it was sad. It was sad being there because you're there with lifers and it's, like one little mistake that you do could lead you to doing life in prison. And there's so many, like, there's so many beautiful women there that are like 19 and they're lifers. And it's just because like one little thing they did, they messed up. 
and I'm just like, fuck. Like, I look at them like, damn, like, you know? Um, so I was there and I knew I needed help. I knew I was a recover, like a drug addict. So I ended up going to a rehab. I was there for eight months and that helped me out a lot. They helped me. Um, I basically went to groups every day. Um, they helped me transition into society because in, when you're in prison, they don't help you transition into society at all. Like you're just in there running your program, cleaning, going to chow, the chow hall, doing everything you need to do. You're running their program. Um, over here in the rehab, they help you transition. You, you could go to church on the weekends. Um, you could, they take you to the DMV to get your ID. They help you build a resume. They help you um, do mock interviews to help you get a job. They also help you apply to jobs in the area that you're going to parole to. Um, so I had help from the rehab and I was very thankful for that. Um, was that the only time that you were locked up? No. So I had gotten locked up prior to that. I had been busted maybe like seven times before that, but it was always like a month, eight months. Like I was in and out, in and out. And then it just hit that one time and I was busted for five years. So as soon as I hit after that five years, I was like, okay, I'm just going to get this straight. Cause I had a lot of time to think about like all those other times I had time to think about, but this time was like the longest I was, I mean, I was in um, isolation. I was by myself in like a room like this. So with the toilet right there, my bed right here. And I was by myself. All I had to do was just, my pictures on my wall, my family just staring at everything, writing, talking to myself, like. How did you mentally prepare yourself for that? Um, I mentally prepared myself for that. I think you have to be strong-minded because I had a lot of neighbors that would go crazy. They would like scream in the middle of the night. They wake me up. Um, some like girls would scream saying I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. And they had been in there for like eight months. Um, I think cause I kept myself focused. I would read a lot. I would write a lot. And then also there, I remember there was a guy who would come around and he was from the local city college and he would come around and do classes. So he would come and leave me a packet. So I remember I joined his class and, um, so I was focused on that. My head wasn't lost, like, oh, I'm stuck in this hole. I was more focused in like the program there, reading. And I would tell my mom like to send me a lot of books too as well. So I think that kept me like not to go like insane in there. Mm -hmm. So after, after you got out, how did your life just go from? So when I got out, um, everything was different. It was weird. <laughs> It was weird. Um, there was like, well, to me, there was all these new drugs. I didn't know what fentanyl was. When I was out, no one was using fentanyl. I was in, um, I remember being in um, county and people would be like, oh, this person's using this. This person's, I'm like, what is that? They're like, you haven't heard about it? I'm like, no. Like, what are you talking about? And I got out and um, everyone was like dying from using fentanyl. And, um, uh, my little sister, she ended up um, using too, and um, I never saw her like that. She wasn't like that before. Um, she was always like the um, straight-A student, the one scared to ditch school. <laughs> um, she was a goody two shoes <laughs> before I got busted. And then I got out and she was this whole different person. And um, I didn't believe it until I saw her. And it was just different. Um, we had like, we still had the same bond, but some things were different. I didn't want to see her because I didn't want to see her like that. Um, everything was different. Um, 
the streets were different, the school buses were different, the phones were different. Um, it was hard to get a job. I applied to at least like 30 jobs. 20 of them hired me. As soon as they checked my background, they didn't want to hire me anymore. Um, I eventually got a job at Hertz Car Sales. But the only reason I got the job there was because they didn't, um, they only tripped off like driving records. They didn't care about felony records. So I had a good um, driving record. So that's why they hired me. I wanted to go back to college. Um, I didn't know where to start. I ended up going to Ventura College at first to go talk to a counselor. And I wanted to do nursing, but I talked to him and that was impossible. He told me my best bet was to do um, substance abuse because I had been there and done that and I would be able to relate to the clients. So I got into that. I enrolled um, at Oxnard College. I am now doing the program. I should be done um, probably by the end of this year. So for one of the reasons why I want to do that program is for my little sister as well, too. Just to show her that there is help. There's people that want to help you. There's... If you want to, you need to want to want that help. You can't, no one could force you to get the help. Like, I remember when I was using, people would want to help me, but I didn't want the help. I got help until I wanted it. Um, my little sister's um, in prison now. She should be getting out this year, though. Um, and I hope she follows my footsteps and hopefully we could start a business because <laughs> I do nails. So I do want to get her into like something in the beauty industry. I've been telling her about it. Uh, maybe like eyelashes or something Then we could start our own business. I'm trying to get her to come down here to Oxnard, Ventura. Um, How did you start doing nails? I started doing nails because one day I lost my job at Hertz while well, everyone lost their job. We, the whole company like just shut down and I was talking to one of my friends. She does nails. Her Instagram, by the way, is 33.3 studio, I believe on Instagram. And, um, I was talking to her and I was like, damn, I need to do something. I need to make money. I don't want to just be sitting here at home like I was bored I was just sitting there at home and I'm used to making money like and um she's like girl start doing something so mind you she does eyelashes teeth whitening tooth gems nails she does all of that she's like why don't you come by um I'll do your mom's nails um bring a notebook and I'll show you how to do the application just write everything down I'm like okay so we went one day she was doing my mom's nails. I wrote down the application, how to apply the nails, how to buff them. Um, and then from there on, I kind of started learning how to do the art, put on the gems, um, airbrush. I'm still practicing on that because it's tricky. <laughs> um, it's a process. With each client, you learn new stuff. And I'm also starting to do... Um, merch like this is one of my shirts it says chingonas nunca mueren um i have other sweaters too as well i do little keychains as well um they're nail nail keychain kits um like, I'm looking for my <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll show it though yeah we'll yeah. show it <laughs> she, she actually uh drew on the nails that says making changes <laughs> Um, I have been doing, well, I did do one pop-up. I don't know if you guys are aware with, um, the pop-ups they do with vendors. So I have been doing, I did do one pop-up and it was really fun. Even though I didn't sell anything, I was able to build, um, clientele through there because I gave them my phone numbers and they did. I also do press-ons on the side for the women that can't have long nails and they just want it for certain events like photo shoots, um, weddings, 
birthday parties. So I do those as well. Um, yeah, I'm just building my, trying to build my clientele. Tell Slowly. Me, tell me how you feel, like your motivation to what you're going to school for. My motivation for being a substance abuse counselor is um, mainly because I just always remember this one time when I was in my deepest addiction calling my mom and um, I was crying to her and I was telling her, I need help, I need help, but I don't know what's wrong. But now that I look back, it was because I was in a drug addiction. I just didn't know. And I didn't like that feeling. I remember I had like really, I had really bad anxiety and I would cry like every like 10 minutes. And my friend would be like, what's wrong with you? Like, cause I never cry. She'd be like, why are you crying? And I'd be like, I don't know, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong with me. And I didn't know. So I called my mom because I felt like she was the only one that was going to be able to help me. I called her. Um, she helped me. She helped me get help. Um, and yeah, that's what motivated me. And then also my sister and my best friend that recently just passed away too. She passed away from? Yeah, she passed away from... Um, an overdose. So that's what's really motivating me. Because she wasn't um, that type of person to use like that. It's like the saying, like, um, why do bad things happen to bad or good people? <laughs> that saying. Um, another thing I want to mention when how I had mentioned that when I was in isolation, when I was busted, um, I remember I had always been there like calling my friends and there was only certain ones that would answer. And then I'd be calling my homegirls that I was running the streets with and they wouldn't answer. And I'd be like, what the fuck? Like they'd be like, oh, we're gonna be there for you when you're down and put money on your books, this and that. Um, probably like not, Probably once I got a letter from them, pictures from them, one package. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is at the end of the day, your family's like what you all, well, for me, your family's like what, what I got. Cause there wasn't one time that I called my mom and she didn't answer. There wasn't one time that I called my dad and he didn't answer, whether they were working or not, they always answered. They were at, whether they were at the dentist, the doctor, doing whatever they had to do, they always answered. And yeah, that always goes through my head. So I think that also like motivated me to change just because they were there for me during my darkest times. So now that I'm out, I have to do what's best for me. And I know that makes them happy as well. Um, relationship with your parents is now so it's crazy because my relationship with my dad before was really rocky we used to like crash heads all the time just because he was always more strict um we used to argue all the time it was just wasn't good I I hated going to my dad's and I liked being at my mom's because she was more laid back and um after I got out, it was, it's the opposite now. It's weird. <laughs> like, I don't hate going to my mom's, but it's just the opposite. Now I get along with my dad way better. He trusts me. Like, it's crazy. I don't know if, like, he changed while I was in there, too. Or, like, just everything I'm doing is making him happy. And he's just, like, giving me all that trust. Are you so, the, only, the only daughter from your dad's side? No, I have a... Little, two little, a little sister, a little brother, and a, another brother. <laughs> yeah, so, but our relationship is good. 
I never thought I would be living back with my dad again. I thought I would be living with my mom, but I actually love living with my dad. I love being there. I could do my nails there. He's happy, everything that I'm doing. He's really happy, yeah. And I'm happy for him too. He's started from a long way and now he's up doing his own thing. That's good. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to do your own nails? It was hard when I first started doing my own nails, especially my non-dominant hand. It was really hard, yeah. But now I kind of got used to it just because it takes practice. It takes practice for nails. Um, I had a couple clients like when I first started. Well, when I first started, I started doing something called tips for tips. So people would give me nail tips for putting tips on their hands. So just because I was a beginner and I didn't want to charge them like all kinds of money for something I didn't know that was going to last or not. So I started off as tips for tips and I had that going on for like two months. And then after that, um, I put a price and then I set the price higher and higher. So now I'm just like at a flat rate. But um, yeah, it was hard at first doing my own nails. Now I'm getting the hang of it slowly. Do you get mm -hmm. classes? No, I haven't. I am thinking maybe about it in the future. Yeah, but just not right now. Just because right now I'm so focused on school, work, and I am also doing internship hours because I work um, at a rehab right now. So I'm doing my internship hours. So I have a lot of different things going on on the side right now. But maybe once I'm done with my internship hours and I have my certification, maybe I could do that. Would you say that that's actually keeping you very centered, the fact that you're staying busy? Yes. So I feel like for me, doing nails is like a therapy. It's like a really good therapy. And um, I feel like if I wasn't doing nails, I'd probably be in the streets doing something else, honestly. I also want to... Um, so I work at a rehab. I want to incorporate somehow nails with um, women rehabs because self-care is a big part of um, recovery. Um, when you're, well, for me, when I was in rehab, I didn't feel pretty. I was gaining weight. I was, I felt ugly. My hair was messy. My nails weren't done. I didn't have makeup. Um, I want to be able to go into residential programs for women and hopefully start um, self-care groups, self and do their nails, just to let them know that someone does care about them and that they are beautiful and they could feel good about themselves in rehabs. So that's something that I do want to do. So um, I started dating my boyfriend in junior high. Um, we were like, well, I was in love with him right away. We, we were young, obviously. We did a lot of stupid shit. We went through our, you know, our phases. Um, we went through our phases a lot. And then um, he would get busted all the time. He would go to juvenile hall, camp. I would wait for him all the time. I remember I'd be there nine months. Okay, another nine months. Okay, another eight months. Like, it was just back and forth. Um, um, we were doing good for a while and then things kind of like started hitting rock bottom. I, that's when I started using and I was just, I kind of separated myself from him because I didn't want him to see me like that. We, mind you, me and him never used together. We never, he never put me in a situation where I was going to get busted. I never put him in a situation where he was going to get busted. If we did something, we always did it separate. We never did it together because we didn't want to be in a, the same boat like that with each other. So um, I started doing my own thing and I started using and um, of course he cut me off for a while because he was upset with what I was doing. Um, he ended up going to prison and I was out here still. And then that's when I ended up going to prison and um, we kind of, after that, we just were like tater totting back and forth. We were both in and out, in and out. It was like that for like maybe six years. We were tater totting in and out, in and out. 
And after this last time we both got out, I think this is the last time. <laughs> like, we're not going back. We're doing good now. Um, he has shit, his shit together now. He's doing good. Um, we still had a little bumps in the road, but I could tell this time that we're both out, our relationship's different. It's not the same at all. It's like how it was before. Like, I don't feel like before I felt the need, like, oh, I need to go through his phone. Like, you know, now I'm just like, oh, okay. It's right there next to me. Like just little, little stuff like that. Um, yeah, the, the vibes feel different. It, he's doing good. We have, um, we don't have no kids, but we just got a little puppy the other day. <laughs> She's seven weeks. So we treat her like our baby. Um, but yeah, our relationship's good and hopefully, well, it is going to stay that way. We build a future together. My advice for anyone who is dealing with substance abuse would be to get help, go to a detox, go to a rehab, a residential, even if it's an outpatient, if you're trying to get at or if you know you are trying to get at least that kind of help um, and you have that mentality in your head, you're going to want to keep going towards that goal. Um, but you have to want to want it. So for anyone who's dealing with um, separation of parents at a young age, I would recommend um, talking to a counselor for sure. That helped me a lot. Um, finding a counselor that understands you. I went through maybe like a handful of counselors until I found the right counselor. And you need to find the one that's going to help you understand, one that you know is listening to you, one that, um, that you feel is on the same boat as you, one that you could connect with. So I think that's a very good, important part, having someone you could talk to. Also, it is okay to speak what you are going through. Don't be afraid to speak up about your family problems, about how you're feeling, your emotions, what's going on at home, etc. Talk, talk everything out with your counselor. They'll be able to help you in their best way. That's what they're there for. Daisy, I just want to say I love you and I miss you. I feel like I haven't even actually been able to see you since I've been out because I didn't get to see the real you. Um, I hope I get to see you soon and we could just build good memories from there and you keep your head on your shoulders. And I know you could do good. I've seen you do good before. I know the type of woman you are and you're going to grow to be someone very positive and I know you're going to be able to change other women's life as well. Remember when you get out, don't go back to the same people you're hanging out with because at the end of the day, where were, where were they when you were busted? Don't give up. Don't. Be the strong person that you once were. Be the strong person you are now. Be everything that you ever wanted to be. If you are interested in a resource for substance abuse or being a substance abuse counselor, we do have a program at Oxnard College and it's called the ADS program, the Addiction Disorder Studies. It's a very great program. It's a two year program and it passes by real quick. It does not feel like two years at all. So you guys should go ahead and check it out. Also, if you guys ever want to get your nails done, you could go ahead and hit me up on my page. <laughs> if anyone would like to reach out to me, I am on Instagram as at chingona underscore nails 805. Also as at scrappy do. 805. Thank you all for listening to my story and this is Making Changes.